Scrivener lets you create footnotes in a couple of different ways, so let's look at each one of them. In general, you have two kinds of footnotes. Inspector footnotes, which are just called footnotes, and inline footnotes. Let's look at inspector footnotes first. Open up the inspector by clicking the I button in the toolbar up top and then go to the last tab, which has this little speech bubble at the top. In case you are already familiar with comments in Scrivener, you know this pane already and also the process for creating inspector footnotes or just footnotes for that matter is practically the same as with comments. Go to your editor and select the part of the text that you want the footnote to refer to. That means select the text at which end you want the footnote indicator to appear. And then in the comments and footnotes panel in the inspector, click the CF button at the top. Now Scrivener creates a new empty footnote and the text that you enter in this footnote field in the inspector is what will appear at the bottom of the page as footnote in the final document. Just as a side note here, the font setting for footnotes can be overridden in the compiler if you want. So I wouldn't necessarily obsess about how they look like here because you can change them for your final document anyway. But still, you have almost all the formatting tools available for these footnotes element, so you can go crazy with it if you want. If you right-click on one of the footnotes, you can also convert them into a comment and vice versa. We'll have a look at how the compile of this looks like in a second. Let me just go through the other type of footnotes first. Inline footnotes work very similar to inline annotations, in case you're familiar with them. What you do is you select some text in the editor and then go to Insert Inline Footnote. This will convert the selected text into an inline footnote, which means that the part of the text that you just selected and converted into an inline footnote will be the text that is shown down below in the footnote itself. And in the text block itself, a footnote indicator is put in its place. So inline footnotes are shown in your document in the editor, but the compiler will cut them, replace them with a footnote indicator and put the text in the footnote itself. This means that the same caveats apply here as with inline annotations, in case you are familiar with them. The compiler just cuts every character that is defined as inline footnote, which might leave you with unnecessary space characters or line breaks, depending on where you have your inline footnotes. What you can do is you place a placeholder marker text in the text body and put the text that should appear in the footnote in some other place. This way you can get rid of the footnote content in the editor and it's not in your way. The way it works is this. You go to the place in your text where you want to have the footnote indicator later and you put a word there in square brackets indicating that this is where the footnote indicator will go. For example, the word marker in square brackets. And again, be careful not to create unnecessary space characters or line breaks. Then in some other place in this document or even in another document in the binder, as long as that document will be included in the compile later, repeat the text in square brackets that you use to indicate where the marker goes. So in this case, just put the word marker in square brackets again and then put the text that should appear in the footnote itself directly after that. So if I were to compile this right now, it would look like this. So summing up footnotes, you have three ways of placing footnotes. One, use the footnotes function in the inspector in the comments and footnotes tab. Two, use inline footnotes and just leave the footnote text in your editor in line with your document. And three, use a marker in square brackets in line with the text in your editor and place the same marker followed by the footnote content in some other place 
that will also be included in the compile. You just choose which of those ways you prefer to use.